These Jeeps come in three variants. In this particular Jeep, I have th all three variants of it, so it can be converted from what you see here, which is the SUV style, where it's gonna have a full covered rear section, to the truck top version, which is identical. The only exception is the top here stops right behind the driver and passenger seat. Now, when this vehicle was new, I think it was really designed for really small people because when I got into it and started driving it, I noticed I was right up against the steering wheel. And I'm 6'3", I'm not small by any means, so crunching myself in there was flashing me back to my uh, 1970s MG. These vehicles aren't necessarily the most roomy of vehicles. However, after moving the seats back about four inches, it does give plenty of leg room into the under dash portion of the vehicle. Now, of course, when you buy these vehicles, they're gonna be heavily rusted. This particular vehicle had to have the floors completely replaced front to rear. They were completely gone. Now, when you go to buy a Jeepster Commando, you're going to notice a few things. If we look at the front fender, this is an unmolested, uncut section of the vehicle. Now, one of the weird differences is the rear fender. Now, this is a cut fender. It has about two inches of lip that should be coming down all the way around the inside. But oftentimes, when they're modified for off-road use, that lip is cut off. And it's cut off for clearance issues and for look. Um, when you look at this vehicle, it does sit perfectly flat, meaning that if I put a level on the rear section right by the rear window, it would be completely level with the ground. So it had a really weird look when you looked at the front tire gap from fender to tire compared to the rear tire gap fender to tire. And even with it being cut as much as it is, you can still see there's about seven inches or six inches of gap here. And then if we slide forward to the front, there's about seven to eight inches of gap there. And that was, you know, the design that they chose to go with as far as how the, the car looked. And it's not a bad design, it's just a little bit different. In my opinion, the front end of this vehicle is a gorgeous looking front end. I really like the wider grille with the turn signals out by the corners. I like the bulbous front fenders as well as the slant and the shortness of the windshield. I even like the design of how the leaf springs come poking out the front. It's wild. The leaf spring perch in the front is right up against the, uh, the bumper where you would see it. So they're kind of poking their way out. Um, one surprising thing doing the the flip from under to over on the leaf spring. I was concerned that I would have a problem with steering. However, upon getting everything complete, it's actually ended up being just fine with a four inch drop pitman arm. Now there's a lot of aftermarket support for all these vehicles like JKs and CJs and TJs and all the newer model. But there are a lot of unsung heroes in the Jeep fleet and this Jeep Commando is one of them. Now, the most interesting thing, this is a complete departure from what you would see in most of the other vehicles. One big departure is just the look of it. You have a shorter windshield, it's kind of laid back. You have a fastback style rear end, meaning it's kind of tilted forward. You've got this wider hood, which was you know popularized in the Wagoneer style. Um, and then you have kind of these swoopy style fast body lines. Now, really, Jeep's idea in developing this vehicle was to have a family vehicle, something that was a little bit faster, a um, little bit more street capable, however, still had the pedigree or the off-road ability of a CJ or at the time, uh, you know, MBs even uh, were really popular in this time and then the civilian version of it, so on and so forth. Now, uh, they did not sell as well as the CJ did, the open top Jeeps, mainly because, well, people weren't, weren't quite ready for it. Like anything today, it comes out, it has a lot of improvements or a different design that people aren't accustomed to. Well, sometimes people are gonna resist that change. And unfortunately, this was a vehicle that only had a very short runtime uh, and then was discontinued. Um, it was made two different times in the 50s and then again in the 60s and then made a third time when AMC purchased Jeep 
and they changed it a fair amount and that quickly killed uh, this style vehicle whereas vehicles like the Bronco or the Blazer continued to be produced long into the 90s uh, Jeep kind of ended production of this vehicle in the 70s. Like any old Jeep when I got this uh, it was neglected heavily. It was used as a a hunting vehicle or a farm vehicle so a couple of things had been extremely neglected one this poor paint job somebody used actual leaf branches as they mainly do when they do these custom uh, kind of camouflage designs so when I got it it was you know this is what it looked like um, I of course have done a lot of replacement of sheet metal it was extremely rusty there was no floors no rockers everything had been bonded over so um, hats off to the original owner who was a bondo genius um, there was so much bondo in this it took hours and hours to a wire wheel it all out of the vehicle but it is bondo free now which is nice still a lot of bodywork left to do but as I move forward it's it's getting there so uh, one nice thing about these vehicles is that they're powered by a v6 which is a very compact uh, unit rather than a straight six so you have this much shorter front nose when AMC acquired Jeep in the 70s they added some distance here to the front of the uh, body to fit in their AMC V8 or straight six model engines and uh, not that it's a bad looking vehicle but not my favorite they went to a completely different grill much shorter flatter rectangular shaped instead of this nice classic what you would see on a CJ um, or even modern uh, YJs you see that same kind of front headlight front uh, grill setup mm -hmm. 